ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय रीडिंग फ्रॉम श्रीमद पाठवतम टेन टू थ्री चैप्टर थर्टी वर्स नंबर ट्वेंटी फाइव आदिपन्न स्वरात्र वेष्टोलमुठादि आत्मसाधन स्वृत पर ट्रांसलेशन एंड परफेक्ट बाई हिस्ट्री वाइन रेसी भक्ति वेदांत स्वामी श्रील प्रभुपाल जय प्रभुपाल ट्रांसलेशन He is placed in the midst of burning pieces of wood, and his limbs are set on fire. In some cases, he is made to eat his own flesh or it eaten by others. Purport by His Divine Grace, S. Bhakti Vedanta Swami Sri La Prabhupada. Jai Prabhupada. From this verse, through the next three verses, the description of punishment will be narrated. The first description is that. the criminal has to eat his own flesh burning with fire or allow others him uh, or allow others like himself who are present there to eat in the last great war people in concentration camps sometimes ate their own stool or there is no wonder that in the in the yamsadana the board of yamraj one who had a very enjoyable life eating others flesh has to eat his own flesh does end the bhakti vedanta perfect so we are reading in this part of the shrimad bhagavatam explained by lord kapila to his mother about the experiences a condition soul has to go through after his death a conditioned soul who enjoyed material world in different ways what is he going to experience and we saw all the different stages of life old age and how painfully uh, the living entity goes through such experiences and then finally dies and then after death what is the journey and here in today's verse some of the punishments and the experiences uh, the living entity has to go through in yama sadhana in the abode of yama raj yama loka so this particular verse prabhupad has pointed out is for the the kind of punishment the flesh eaters the meat eaters have to experience आदीपन स्वगात्राण वेष्टोलमुखाधि स्वगात्राण हिज ओन लिम्स आदीपन इज सेट ऑन फायर उलमुखाधि वेष्टयिवा एंड हिज बारी इज सराउंडेड बाय उलमुखा चारको बर्निंग वुड एंड uh he is surrounded by that and uh, his body is set on fire swagatrana and then atma mamsadanam kwapi atma mamsa adanam he is made to eat his own flesh kwapi swakrutam sometimes he is eat to eat eat his own swakrutam adanam paroti paropi adanam and there are also others around him who will also be made to eat his flesh he is placed in the midst of burning pieces of wood veshtayitva ulmukhadi bihi and his limbs swagatrana are set on fire adipanam in some cases he is made to eat his own flesh atma mamsadanam or have it eaten by others swakrutam paroto parato piva so quite a scary 
description of the experiences the living entity has to go through and uh, what is all this because of the sinful activities the living entity has performed for gratifying his senses actually e- me eating meat is a not at all a necessary thing and uh, somehow by culture by habit a misdirected civilization does not take into all these things uh, shila prabhupad says a gentleman is one who thinks or who is sensitive to about how much pain i am inflicting on someone else so someone has to be sensitive how much i am causing pain to someone else i remember we used to have i don't know if we have now we used to have small school groups and we used to have those culture camp or some heritage fest we used to i remember i used to give a class to one group of children and then i would call i want a volunteer for this can someone come up i want a brave child brave boy and children you know how they all put up their hand yes yes and then so i would pick a cute looking boy <laughs> bring him up and then i would have a long needle sharp long needle and then i would say okay here is a very brave boy and now give me your hand and then the boy would give his hand and then i would say now i have this needle i'm just going to do a small experiment i'm going to pierce this needle through his palm and it should come out this way okay already everybody is shocked <laughs> and this boy also doesn't know what to do so don't worry it will be very quick and then i'll just push it this way and take it out and then already no no <laughs> why why what is wrong no it's going to pain small boy it's going to pain then i would then switch to say oh it's going to pain him right yeah nice boy shouldn't pain him then i would say just look you take a chicken and you take a knife you cut the neck poor chicken isn't it is it okay <laughs> you know sometimes like that we have to do to make people understand <clears throat> so uh people are not mindful about what has gone people eat all this kind of food and what has what the living entity has gone through people don't consider like fishes also eating fish we have seen pictures and films when fishes are removed from the ocean or the river in the net how they are wriggling for their life how hard hearted actually by conditioning people become very hard hearted they don't consider this a living entity is struggling and do i have to eat them so uh in a misdirected civilization people don't un- consider these things carefully and uh, i remember recently reading in the newspaper uh about taking away somebody's life a judge mentioned i think it was a supreme court judge we have no ability to bring life and hence we have no ability to take away life that was the reasoning he was giving 
so sound reason so we cannot take away life we can't bring one life so we have no right to take away but when someone is driven by uh, material desires one does not consider these things that is why uh, suna suna means animal slaughter animal e meat eating is considered to be one of the sins in shrimad bhagavatam dyutam panam striyah suna tatra papas chaturvidha bhagavatam says these are the chaturvidha tatra papas chaturvidha these are the four sinful activities dyutam gambling panam intoxication striyah illicit connection with women and suna animal slaughter that is why you see how when shila prabhupad gave initiation he only asked for two conditions during initiation he wanted us to take vows on these two four regulative principles and 16 rounds of hari krishna mantra there are many other things like rising early in the morning reading his books doing devotional service associating with devotees all of that is also important but the bare minimum shila prabhupada expected to be his disciple is four regulative principles and chanting 16 rounds because the four regulative principles if we follow we are protected from sinful activities tatra papas chaturvidha and chanting 16 rounds of hare krishna which is the yuga dharma to advance in krishna consciousness so these are very very fundamental and why is it so why why are we so serious about sinful activities because as krishna explains in the gita esham tva antagatam papam jananam punya karmana te dvandva moha nirmukta bhajante mam drudha vrataah mam bhajante if one has to develop bhakti to krishna it is not possible if one is sinful esham ta antagatam papam papam antagatam all his sinful activities should have ended then bhajante mam drudha pratah with firm determination one will be able to do bhajana so bhakti cannot come about if one is indulging in sinful activities and so prabhupad his prabhupad said wherever my disciples are they should follow these four regulative principles and chant 16 ram this was the strong recommendation so bhagavatam says these are the four sinful activities and krishna says that when one is performing antagatam papam bhajante mam drudha vrataha drudha vratha to become firmly determined to and to do bhajana is not possible even in uh, uh, the bhagavatam prahlad maharaj instruction also it is the same matirna krishne parathasvatho va mitho bipadhyet griha vratana when prahlad was explaining this to his father he used an expression matirna krishna actually we should see we should appreciate this how shila prabhupada was so careful in all of the expressions english expressions that he used like for instance prabhupada used this expression international society for krishna consciousness right krishna consciousness 
Actually, that expression is used by Prahalad in the Bhagavatam. Matirna Krishne Parataswatova Nitho Bipadheta Graham. Matirna Krishne. Krishna Matihi. Matihi means consciousness, an outlook, an intelligence, and our, our being, our experience, our consciousness. Krishna Matihi. If we want to develop Krishna Matihi, and, and Prabhupada said our organization is meant for developing Krishna Mati in everyone in this human society. So just see how Prabhupada was creating an institution. An institution has an objective. And the objective is to bring about a certain understanding, certain intelligence, certain thinking, a certain consciousness. And what is that? And what is the basis of that? The basis is the Bhagavatam. Bhagavatam is, is teaching, is helping to bring the reader to a certain consciousness. What is that? You see, in the, in the reading of the Bhagavatam, in the reading of the Vedic literature, we can be lost sometimes. But what is it? The essence is to bring us to a state of consciousness where we are fully Krishna conscious. We are aware of Krishna. We are aware of our relationship with Krishna. And it is not just an intellectual thing. It is something that we are feeling moment to moment. Just like moment right now, we feel we are a, I'm a man, I'm a woman, I'm young, I'm old. Moment to moment we feel because that is at the level of consciousness. That's where our identity rests. Our existence rests there at the level of consciousness. Now, that consciousness is now polluted. And that consciousness, according to the laws of nature, is abiding in this body. And hence, there is a misidentification that I am the body. That consciousness is in terms of the body, the mind. And the, and the nature of the body, nature of the mind, I'm educated, I'm uneducated, I'm rich, I'm poor, I'm man, I'm woman, I'm young, old. The various kinds of understanding. Understanding in the level of consciousness. But this is a contaminated consciousness. The pure consciousness is Krishna Matihi. To be in full love and devotion with Krishna. That is, and that is the consciousness Bhagavatam wants to teach. And Prabhupada was creating an institution to teach that in the human society. And so he called it Krishna Consciousness Society. So, Prahlad is saying, he's using this expression. There are many times in the, uh, Rupa Goswami also uses a similar uh, expression. Krishna Bhakti Bhavita, Krishna Bhakti Rasa Bhavita Matihi. Bhavita means uh, filled with or immersed in Matihi. Uh, Rupa Goswami also used the same expression, same word Matihi, consciousness. Krishna Bhakti Rasa Bhavita Matihi. Consciousness which is imbued with, absorbed in, immersed in Krishna Bhakti Rasa, the mellow of Krishna Bhakti. So, see what, let's see what Prahalad is saying. Mathirna Krishne Parathasvathova Nitho Vipadhyeta Grahavratanam Nitho Vipadhyeta Upapadhyeta Nitho Vipadhyeta Upapadhyeta means Upapadhyeta means to awaken Krishna Matihi Upapadhyeta If one has to awaken Krishna Matihi. Uh, see all of this, how carefully Srila Prabhupada presents. Our Acharyas have presented these things. That Krishna Matihi is not an artificial imposition. 
it is not something that has to be put into our mind our consciousness into our our uh, our soul no it is already there it is covered it is upapadhyeta it has to be awakened Uthishta Jagrata Prapyavarani Bhodata. Upanishad also talks about it. It has, it has to be Jagrata. It has to be awakened. It is sleeping right now. So, Mathirna Krishne Parataswatova Mithobi Padhyeta Grihavrata Upapadhyeta Grihavrata Nam Na Upapadhyeta. If somebody is a Grihavrata Nam dedicated to the he has taken vows to improve his graha. Actually, Prabhupada explains in the purport there in the Bhagavatam, the graha refers to the, it can refer at, at one level, the graha of the soul, which means the body. This body is the graha, is the home for the soul. And graha vratana means one who has dedicated his life for improving his body. Such a person, na upapadhyeta, he cannot develop Krishna Mati. And why does one become grahavratanam like that? Dedicated to the body and things connected to the body, home, wife, children, whole life, his life is centered around that. that such a person is a grahavratana. And why does that happen? One becomes so dedicated to this Adanta Gobihi. Uncontrolled senses. So, if when senses are not controlled, then one's consciousness becomes polluted and instead of understanding who I am, he thinks that I have to be simply dedicated to this well-being of this body and the extensions of the body. So, Adanta Gobi Vishatam Tamisram. And when is Adanta Gobi, when one's senses are not controlled, Vishatam Tamisram, he enters hellish conditions of life. Puna Punas Charvita Charvanana. And this Adanta Gobi is such that Puna Punas Charvita Charvanana, again and again one indulges in sense gratification, which means it becomes addictive. Addictive means you just can't give it up. Again you go back to it again and again and again. Puna, puna, charvita, charvana, ana. So this is what happens to the conditioned soul. And Prabhupada explains that to come out of this kind of a situation, trapped in sense gratification, it cannot happen by one's own endeavor. To understand I am, I am trapped. What is this life? What is the purpose of life? Who is God? All of this we cannot figure out by our own self. That is why in the song that we sing every morning, Samsara Davana la Lida Loka. Lida Loka means Loka, the living entities in this world, the society. Lida, afflicted. Afflicted with what? Samsara Davana la. Samsara Davana la means a forest fire. Actually, some of we don't pay sufficient attention to the song. Every morning we are supposed to remind ourselves, my life is like an animal which is trapped in a forest fire. What is the situation of an animal in the forest fire? Car running here, there, here, there, everywhere there is fire. What can the living entity, that animal do? Birds, they try to fly. Trees are set on fire. They get charred. They get killed. And they are so much in anxiety. Actually our life is in that situation. But somehow we are not conscious of the reality. And we are forgetful. Just like the example Prabhupada gives. 
an animal in a slaughterhouse. A man, the slaughter butcher, has given some green grass and the animal is chewing very happily. So nice green grass I have got. Does not know any moment he can be slaughtered. This is exactly the, the, the pleasure the goat or the, an animal is feeling by eating some green grass. Not able to realize the imminence of death. That's actually our position too. So, the living entities, this is compared to forest fire. And forest fire, by human endeavor, cannot, it cannot be put out. Only when, rain, when it rains, the forest fire can be. You can't call a fire brigade, fire services, and nothing can be done. Only when it rains, you can put out the fire. So, which means it requires divine intervention. So when we are in this kind of a stuck in sense gratification, illusion, addicted, Again and again indulging in sense gratification, in that material conception of life, grahavratana. For that consciousness to be elevated, it requires divine intervention. And that divine intervention comes in the form of Vedic literatures, in the form of the spiritual master, in the form of the sadhus in the form of the deities, in the form of the temple, in the form of the holy name, in, for, in the form of prasadam. When the living entity comes in touch with all of this, he can, jagrata begins, waking up begins. So that is the, <clears throat> that is the nature of uh, sense gratification. And uh, so unless we are freed from sense, the desires for sense gratification, we cannot experience bhakti. So acharyas are very concerned that we, Prabhupada, he was very concerned that we come to the level of pure bhakti, level of experiencing real bhakti, and we cannot come to that unless we give up sinful activities. That's why he made that a condition of initiation. Taken in front of the deities, fire, the Vaishnavas, everybody. That we don't indulge in these sinful activities. Because if we don't give up sin, if we don't, sins happen because of sinful desires. And unless we are freed from sinful desires, we cannot come to the point of bhakti. So, in Krishna Consciousness Movement of Srila Prabhupada, Prabhupada didn't want this to be just a, a show organization, an organization with people who look like sadhus, who dress like sadhus, who, but uh, in, internally they are all doing many other things. You know, duplicitous, like, without spiritual purpose, Prabhupada didn't want that kind of an organization. He wanted our organization to be genuine. He wanted all the members of the organization to be genuine spiritual seekers. Genuinely pursuing and, and, and practicing genuine spiritual life. So for that to happen, Tatra, Papas, Chaturvidha, these four sinful activities and to be freed from that is absolutely essential. There are many religious spiritual organizations in today's world where they don't even talk about any of the sinful activities at all. So Prabhupada didn't want it to be like that because he wanted us to develop genuine spiritual bhakti experience. <clears throat> There is one instance in Prabhupada's life. This was in uh, June of 1976. To give an idea how Prabhupada was so careful about our understanding. Actually, that care is there even, that caution is there, that concern is there in Vedavyasa's 
literatures in the in the Bhagavatam in the Vedic literatures. Prabhupada tells that although Veda Vyasa was asked, Narada Muni gave him instruction that you must write about Krishna, Krishna Cheshtam, Krishna's activities. He had Narada had told him when Vyasa Deva was not feeling. Uh, completely satisfied even after compiling all the Vedic literatures Narada's instruction was that you must write a book on Krishna and his activities and the pastimes who has recently appeared so when you get an instruction like that from your guru you would expect okay now I'll start the first chapter birth of Krishna that's what Vyasa should have done we would think but Vyasa First nine cantos, he doesn't bring up the topic of Krishna's birth. Only in the tenth canto it comes up. Because the nine cantos are meant to prepare the conditioned soul or prepare the reader to come to the spiritual platform when one can actually appreciate Krishna's activity. So, this example in Prabhupada's life illustrates these kind of principles very nicely. So, this was in 1976. Already the movement is about nearly 10 years old. There are devotees around the world. And uh, this is June of 1976. Srila Prabhupada is in Los Angeles. And Los Angeles Temple, Prabhupada considered to be the western headquarters for him for this movement and he comes to know that there are a few devotees and these few de his disciples there were about 25 men and 25 women devotees they would form a small gathering it was a big community Los Angeles temple was one of the very very flourishing communities maybe there were about 200 300 devotees maybe that time so, very flourishing committee, the community. There were about 50 devotees. They would gather and they would read Srila Prabhupada's books, especially Chaitanya Charitamrita, where there is description of gopis and Krishna's dealings with the gopis and specially read those with an intent of developing gopi bhav, bhava of the gopis. And they called this a gopi bhav club within the temple and those few devotees have spoke to some other devotees and this is the you know this is what we are trying to do and we want to develop the feelings of the gopis we want to understand we want to appreciate the feelings of the gopis and because the gopis are the most elevated devotees all of those kind of things and then Prabhupada comes to know of it Prabhupada is furious about it he calls the GBCs, a few of them who are there. And he calls all those, a few of the devotees who are part of the Gopi Bhav Club. And he calls them and then he's furious, he's very angry that this kind of a discussion, all these things are going on. And then, uh, so, and then Prabhupada asks, what is going on? And then they describe, they tell, no, no, we are reading only from your books, Srila Prabhupada, all those kinds. Then there are a series of instructions he gives. That, that meeting lasted for about 45 minutes, which Srila Prabhupada was very angry. And there are a series of instructions that Srila Prabhupada gives in that context. It is very important for us to re reflect on those instructions that Prabhupada gave. First instruction, Prabhupada, because the devotees are trying to justify. Srila Prabhupada, we are trying to develop a desire like the gopis had the kind of desires we want to develop such desire Prabhupada cuts them out and says first you deserve then you desire you see it is not easy to come to that level of spiritual uh, elevation first to, to develop such desires to uh, First we have to develop the qualification. First you deserve, then you desire. Another example, Prabhupada, then they said that, Prabhupada, we are reading from your books. 
So Prabhupada said, in my books, there are all kinds of instructions from the beginning stages to the most advanced stage. And one should read those sections which are according to one's level of realization. So Prabhupada's books have all kinds of instructions are there to a beginner and to the most advanced devotee. But according to our level, one has to read that. Another instruction Prabhupada gave was, he said that spiritual life is like a razor. Suppose there's a sharp razor and you give it to a child, a small baby, just by learning to hold things and you give a sharp razor. What will happen? The child will harm itself because the child cannot understand, does not understand how to deal with a razor. In the same way, these topics about the most advanced devotees, gopis, these are all very elevated subjects. At an early stage, we cannot deal with it, we cannot grasp it. And another example Prabhupada gave in that 45 minutes conversation is that it's like a fool, an ignorant fool trying to get a PhD. He said, an ignorant fool, what does he understand? Theses and research and methodology and all those kind of things. It's an ignorant fool, he's desiring I should get. And another example he gave was a child trying to understand what is sexual pleasure. A small child, his body, mind is not grown. He cannot understand all those things. He cannot grasp. In the same way, unless we have spiritually purified and come to the spiritual platform, and we can come to the spiritual platform when we are freed from all material desires. And hence, antagatam papam. Unless we come to that stage, we cannot really experience. And then after strong instructions, and then the devotees said, and then he said, no more such meetings should happen. And they were all very innocent devotees. They just had thought that, you know, we should do something like that. And they offered their respects to Prabhupada and said that Srila Prabhupada will not do that anymore. They were very understanding and they left. After they left, only the GBCs were left, were there. And then Prabhupada told them, if this kind of a sahajiya, sahajiya means without proper qualifications, trying to jump and experience some very, very esoteric, very elevated spiritual consciousness that is described in the Vedic literatures, even in Srila Prabhupada's books, that is called sahajiya. So, uh, if such sahajiya tendencies comes into our movement, preaching will be finished. This was the concern that Srila Prabhupada had. So our movement is meant for preaching. We have to develop ourselves and we have to help others develop. Janma sartha kakori karo paropakar. This is the purpose of our movement. So preaching will be finished and then Prabhupada says when I was in Vrindavan many such Sahajiya Babaji's would tell me why Swamiji you are planning to go out of America go out of Vrindavan go to America you are here everything is nice just be here so this kind of an attitude preaching will be finished so Prabhupada wanted us to practice Krishna consciousness Regulative principles, chanting, morning program, temple programs, and which is all for our spiritual development and be engaged in spreading Krishna consciousness to others. And that is the preaching. And if someone becomes unduly, immaturely, prematurely absorbed in these kind of uh, sahajiya tendencies, then the natural result will be they will lose compassion for others and will, preaching will get affected. So, Srila Prabhupada didn't want such things to happen in our organization. Prabhupada wanted this to be a genuine spiritual organization 
engaged in genuine spiritual welfare work in this world. We'll stop here. Granthara Shrimad Bhagavatam ki Srila Prabhupada ki jai.